Can you talk about the spirit of champion and where that comes from? First and foremost, one of the things about being a principal is that you get too much of the credit when things go right and too much of the blame when things go wrong. Yes. I don't want, I won't take any other credit for what's going right. And what's going right is teachers, our teacher leaders have brought into what we're doing. They're brought, in, they're brought into the vision and their heart's always in the right place. So when you talk about a spirit of a champion, you're talking about the people who, who have been, you know, we have people that have been at Duncanville High School for over 15 years. We have about 35 or 40 teachers who've been there that long. They're profitable about being a Panther. They know it's, it means something. So when you're talking about establishing a culture, that was one of the things that I wanted to do. If we put that Panther on our chest, it means something. Hi, my name is Dr. Mark Smith, and I'm superintendent of Duncanville ISD, and this is my podcast, Super Intentional. My name is Mark Smith, and this is my podcast. You know, leadership matters. Everything rises and falls with leadership. So to have any success in any production, you have to be super intentional about your leadership. I am so excited that I have a super intentional uh, individual and leader with me today. I'm excited to have Mr. Michael McDonald, the principal of Duncanville High School. Welcome to my podcast. Thank you, Dr. Smith. It's my pleasure to be here. Pretty Absolutely. Excited? Well, so I have been looking forward to spending some time in conversation with you about leadership. You have done such an awesome job coming into Duncanville High School. And when I reflect and think back when we were first uh, discussing the job, we never knew anything about a pandemic. And it just so happened that your first year of leading Duncanville High School was the year of the pandemic. How was that? It was tough. But the cool thing about it was you set the exemplar for us. When I say the exemplar, I can remember some of our meetings where you talked about adapting the Mamba mentality, uh, talking about challenges, talking about things that we should be prepared for. So I was able to take that exemplar and I was able to take it back to our campus and really roll it out to our teachers, to our administrative team and to our community. And the biggest thing you talked about was communicating seven times, seven different ways. And the parents knew, the teachers knew that. There wasn't a book out there that we could read that would help us get through this, that we was all, we was going through this together. And just being transparent about what our issues were, about our concerns, really helped us get through the first year of the pandemic. So as you think about the start of the school year, normal start of the school year, and so you're going in as a leader, one thing that leaders do is they want to establish the culture. And so what kind of things stood out for you that you needed to go in right away and impact the culture at Duncanville High School? Correct. It was important for me to let people know, the community and the teachers, that this is their school. This isn't my school. So how can I get us working together to change the perception that had been developed by Duncanville High School? And we had a lot of parent meetings, uh, teacher meetings, just listening to what people's concerns were, but also talking about ways that we can change that. So with my staff and my team, we just wanted to celebrate and empower our teachers. So every opportunity we got, we celebrated small victories, big victories, anything that we can celebrate while we're still supporting and coaching them and I think as we go into year three as we come to an end I think we've done a good job of building the culture but at the same time our teachers get the credit for it they've bought into what we're doing they know we're consistent they understand that you know we don't deviate from the pack it's about professionalism accountability but we do it in such a way and they appreciate that you know you said something that's so awesome there for any leader and that is being intentional about establishing the culture because every system, every organization, they have a culture. Now, it might not necessarily be a positive culture, but they have a culture. And I like the way you've gone in and really established a culture of communication, accountability, and listening. So being the new person, you had some previous experience in Duncanville, but not as principal at the Dun at Duncanville High School, or I should say the Duncanville High School. Correct. A lot of expectations come with leading such a large organization. Were there any anxiety kind of feelings you had once you really were named the principal? And now it's like, wow, 
I'm really the principal of Duncanville High School. Without a question, there was anxiety. <laughs> Without a question, there was fear. You're talking about leading one of the largest high schools in the state of Texas. And at the end of the day, you want to be successful. Yeah, I did have experience as a middle school principal for three years. And then I went to a neighboring high school for three years. That actually helped me prepare for the Duncanville job because the work of the high school, no matter what campus you're at, is the same, right? Teaching and learning. But that at Duncanville, the intensity of the work, when you're talking about 4,400 students, 265 teachers, 18 assistant principals, uh, a community this size, you know, everything is larger. So the intensity of the work was a challenge, and it took a minute for us to get used to it. One of the cool things about, I believe, my leadership style is I lead in three phases, like in a football game. In a football game, you have what? Offense, defense, special teams. That's how you win the game. Well, I take that same concept in the leadership. So for me, offensively, we have our we have our instructional plan. Here's our instructional framework. Then we have our defense, our operational framework, and then we have culture and climate. That's the special teams. So those three phases of what we lead and how we've led at Duncanville High School. Yeah, that is such a great concept to to think about as you go into your leadership and have it in an organized way so that you can actually implement and execute. You know, leading people is is an interesting dynamic. We have this saying in Duncanville, people first, process second. What does that mean to you as a leader? No matter how, I just talked about some systems that we have in place, but those systems mean anything without me first putting the people first. Um, even as we operate and manage our systems, I'm able to come back and talk to our people about, hey, is this process working? And if it's not working, how can we tweak it so it can work so for everybody? So the great thing about it is that if the people aren't driving the processes, then you can't be successful. And so far, thus far, the teachers at Duncanville High School drive our processes. They drive the systems that we do. And I'm able to sit back and monitor the systems, but also have conversations with the people. And they play they and they play a valuable role in tweaking and making those necessary adjustments for us to be successful. Yeah. You know, as a leader, I'm so amazed at how important reflection is. I try to reflect all the time, whether it's on the day, whether it's on an initiative, whether it's on how a meeting went. And I wonder for you as a leader leading such a large organization. How do you build in reflection time and um, what what does that do for you in terms of resetting your focus each day? You know, when I reflect a lot of times, though, as I just mentioned, though, I like to talk to the teachers. I like to be in the hallways. Right. And I like to get their opinions about the pandemic, about how we're communicating. And for me, it allows me to go back ponder about what we're doing just to ensure that we're moving in the right direction. Uh, as I said earlier, the perception is important. And how do you manage and understand that? And without hearing from the community, parents, other stakeholders, your teachers, or even your students, right? It allows me to come back and say, are we moving in the right direction? At Duncanville High School, we talk about winning academic championships, but I have to reflect and ask myself, or am, are we moving in that direction? Because if you're not careful, you can easily be distracted. You can do a large high school. You can get busy doing a lot of things. Right. But are we working on the things that will be most impactful? So that reflection time allows me to think about, are we moving in the right direction? And if we are, continue that trend, stay the course. And if not, refocus. And we do this a lot. We call it recalibrating. Mm -hmm. We recalibrate four times a school year. And that recalibration happens uh when school first start, then we come back in October with the administrative team and the staff because it's easy, once again, to get caught up in all the stuff. Well, we recalibrate and ensure that we understand the mission, the vision of Duncanville High School, the goal to win academic championships, and are we moving in that direction, right? And so we recalibrate four times a year, and that helps me to reflect uh, to ensure we're moving in the right direction. You know, that's awesome for any leader that's listening and wanting to really develop some key strategies to help them always be in adjustment mode. Those are some powerful nuggets um, that that one can take. You mentioned just a little bit ago about, you know, your approach, this concept of looking at it from an offense and a defense and a special teams type concept. So along with that, any good coach, they always are able to make in-game adjustments. So for you at Duncanville High School, with so many moving parts 
from a leadership standpoint, how, how do you go about making those adjustments? When something happens, you got to adjust. Or you have your plan, you have your reflection moments, but things don't always go in a nice sequential manner in leadership. Great question. Because, you know, I talked about the three <clears throat> phases of how we lead, but we have a playbook for every phase. And there are times where we have to make audibles. So, for an example, let's talk about safety and security. No matter how operational we planned everything out, there are things that just occur. And we have to be ready to respond accordingly. And uh, in responding accordingly, we come back and we review what just occurred afterwards, right? And we talked through, did we drop the ball? And if so, how can we correct that moving forward? So a lot of times our teachers, right, if it was in certain areas of the building, they give us input on that. And I tell our team, I tell my admin team all the time, we're not a power run team, so we can't just switch and change up everything we do and go in this direction. Let's reflect and let's talk about the small adjustments that we can make you know, that will continue to help us reach our goal, which is, once again, a safe and secure environment, but also ensure that our teachers feel safe, our students feel safe. So there are times in a high school that size where you have to be able to pivot, make that necessary adjustment, but communicate that out. I recently had a faculty meeting and I communicated out to our teachers, hey, listen, right now the students are winning. Spring has sprung. Yes. We're tired. They found some loopholes in our processes. I need you to tighten this up. Here's how we will tighten it up from the admin perspective. We modify some things that we did, and the teachers love it. And everybody has just been reinvigorated, you know, as we push forward to these last 20 days of school. Well, uh, I reflect back again on um, how you handle the pandemic, and I ask this question a lot of leaders, what keeps you up at night? And so when you think about starting your first year at Duncanville High School, as far as we knew at that point, it was just going to be a regular school year, uh, familiar routines for us. We get to spring break and then everybody's at home. So when you think about how you had to pivot, adjust, have audibles in place, what kept you up at night? And then, but not only that, how were you able to st sustain yourself so that you could be focused and provide leadership at a time when there were a lot of questions? What kept me up at night was the safety of our teachers, was the safety of our students. When we talk about the pandemic, we had never experienced something where it was impacting teachers. It was impacting their loved ones. So they were afraid to come to school. So if teachers don't come to school, if they're not there, how can we move forward with the teaching and the learning? So first and foremost, their safety, their well-being kept me up at night. No matter how transparent we were, no matter how much we communicated, they still had that fear. So the only way to work through that fear was to be there with them daily as we wore a mask, as we put our safety protocols in place. The second thing that kept me up at night was parents. Because parents were concerned about their students. Students were coming home to loved ones who were impacted by the pandemic. When you put a lot of students in that environment, remember, talking about a large high school, 4,500 students, we're not built for social distancing. So those things kept me up because I was inundated with emails from parents, with questions for parents. How could we keep their kids safe? Inundated with questions for teachers. How could I keep them safe? So those are the things that kept me up. But one of the cool things is that we was extremely transparent. We worked with our teachers. We were in the trenches with them. And it was amazing as they started to make the impossible possible, which means that they started to teach on two different platforms. You know, they started to really get into ensuring that our students got what they needed. But those are the things that kept me up at night. You know, so often in leadership, we tend, tend to shy away from talking about some of the challenges because, I don't know, sometimes we may get defensive or sometimes we, it's hard to really reveal an area that we might need to work on. But I, I think there's power in doing that because you get better and you grow. And I remember the challenges we had, and I'm sure you had, I want you to bring some light to that, about transitioning to having to teach students on this dual platform where teachers were now having students in class for a period of time, trying to teach them and give them their attention, but then also having students at home and trying to manage both their regular instruction there physically with students in front of them, but then the technology piece. And not many students, when we first hit the pandemic, 
had the technology tools they needed to really maintain their education. So that had to have been tough. Think about it. One of the largest high schools in the state of Texas. Getting teachers to buy into, hey, I'm going to teach students at home and I'm going to teach students in class. Mr. McDonald, what would that look like? So the hard part in the beginning was talking about it, and we started to have these individual meetings where I go into their professional learning community, their POC meetings, and I would take their feedback. And what we started to do was find our veteran teachers who was already excelling in that, and we had our veteran teachers leading the call. You know, we had them stand up in front of their peers and talked about it is challenging. It will be difficult, but we can do it. And we just worked together. We had some challenges in the beginning. One of the things you talked about was acknowledging the challenges. Sure. One of the things I try to do is always be humble and show that humility and, and let our teachers know I don't have the answers. You know, you hear the, the analogy, you're building a plane while you're flying it. Yes. That's what we were, that's what we were doing. So I started, <clears throat> excuse me. So we just started to talk about, we know this is impossible, but this is Duncanville High School. You know, we are, we are champions. And I started to get te people excited about that. And remember, our goal is championships, and this is what winners do. So it was challenging, Dr. Smith. Students not having the necessary mm -hmm. technology. You know, students were falling behind. So we started to think outside the box, mm -hmm. right, with tutoring, with Zoom meetings. We're doing a lot of different things that we still utilize today. You know, the pandemic taught us some things that showed us that we don't have to continue to teach and have school like we used to. Right. Because of the pandemic, we're still utilizing Zoom. We're utilizing Microsoft Teams. We're still utilizing those technology features that will still help us reach students. But it was challenging, and I say this all the time. The teachers at Duncanville High School make the impossible possible. Right. If you look at our data, our data didn't fall off too much from 2019 to 2000 to 2020. The students still, teachers still taught, and our students still learn. Yeah. So that was an exciting thing. That is amazing uh, to think about that with, you know, how how big that pivot was for everybody. So now we fast forward. We made it through that phase. Now students have been in and out of school for a year and a half or so. You start this school year, everybody's back in person. What was that like? Frightening. <laughs> Frightening. We want to, <clears throat> excuse me, if you recall, we started school August the 2nd. Yes. So we one of the first schools out there. So the first couple of days and you had about 4,500 students in that building and we started to get emails and concerns from parents about social distance, is it safe? But we never wavered. We, we, we walked our students. We, we, con we consistently met with our students to talk to them about ways to navigate Duncanville High School. We consistently met with our teachers to ensure that we had the right safety protocols in place that would keep them safe, that would keep the students safe. So, you know, and we continue, and we consistently talked about the teaching process. And it was tough because you had a majority of your students who had to get reacclimated back into being in school. You're talking about kids who have been out for almost two years. So socially and emotionally, there was a lot of challenges that we had to work through. And to be honest, we're still working through some sure. of those challenges right now today. But I say all that to say that our teachers, this pandemic brought a lot of us together. It brought, mm -hmm. it made our team closer. It made our teachers closer. And you can tell, right, when you come to Duncanville High School and you talk to our teachers about the challenges. You know, now that we reflect on it, it's amazing that we made it through. Mm -hmm. But we made it through because of, and we have some phenomenal people that are in those classrooms that are touching our students. Isn't it amazing how a crisis can bring people together? Typically, you know, but a lot of that is based on the leader, I believe. And so you have a crisis, it can bring division and separate people and create confusion. Or you experience a crisis and it can bring people together. Correct. But the leader being super intentional about how to manage that process, create the culture that you've talked about, you know, you can get that kind of result. A crisis makes you stronger, makes you wiser. You've touched on a lot of those areas. Bringing the excitement back from students being out to now transitioning back into school, 
I walk your halls with you. And, and there is a sense of pride among students about Duncanville High School, uh, not just the academics and the fine arts, uh, not just the football, the basketball, but the totality of what Duncanville High School is. Can you talk about that spirit of champion and where that comes from? First and foremost, one of the things about being a principal is that you get too much of the credit when things go right and too much of the blame when things go wrong. Yes. I don't want, I won't take any other credit for what's going right. And what's going right is teachers, our teacher leaders have brought into what we're doing. They're brought into, they're brought into the vision and their heart's always in the right place. So you talk about a spirit of a champion. You're talking about the people who, who have been, you know, we have people that have been at Duncanville High School for over 15 years. We have about 35 or 40 teachers who've been there that long. They're profitable about being a Panther. They know it's, it means something. So when you're talking about establishing a culture, that was one of the things that I wanted to do. If we put that Panther on our chest, it means something. You know, and talking to our kids, what does it mean to be a Duncanville Panther? So we talk about that in the cafeterias. We talk about that during transition. We make announcements about that. So when students are having bad days, is that how a Panther react or respond? Mm -hmm. Is that what it means to be a Panther? That's not a spirit of a champion. We are champions in my newsletters. I stress that to parents. We are champions day in and day out. One of the cool things is we're coming up on championship season. Today, AP testing starts. Yes. For the next 14 days, we're going to be testing, right? And you're going to see our kids. We're going to step up to the plate. We've been preparing for this season. And so over the next 14 days, we get to go out and compete, right? And this competition allows us to put us in place to win academic championships. In leadership, you know, I think about perception. Perception matters. It's, it is reality. So you talked about your AP uh, uh, testing coming up, and I've had an opportunity to participate in a program at your high school where we were highlighting the success of students who had did well on their AP test. And they even got checks of, you know, $100 or so or whatever the amount was. But it was an opportunity to see those students shine. Uh, the perception a lot of times about Duncanville, because we are so successful in athletics, is that we prioritize athletics, not academics. But that is so not the case. And so talk about the AP, which you just discussed, but some of the other academic accolades and areas of focus that you know as a high school principal is happening each and every day. Dr. Smith, as I reflected taking the job, I looked at the data. Right. And a campus that size, we know that, yeah, athletics, all those is great. But what are we doing to put the spotlight on academics? So for me, it was how could I make it cool to be smart? How could I make it cool to be smart? So with over 4,000 students, I needed, I, my goal is to have 75% of our students take an advanced academic class. So I started meeting with our AP students our first year. And you're talking about, over, we probably at the time in 2019 had an AP program that probably had about 445 students in it, 450. So I started meeting with those students, going to their AP class and having conversations. And they talked about, there is no, there is no attention on us. There is no focus. We don't get celebrated. So over numerous conversations with those students, we came up with the process of creating an AP wall, creating AP focus, AP resources, AP t-shirts, building an AP lounge that would be rolling out at Duncanville High School. And students started to get excited about that. So recently when we did the AP program where we created the AP wall of fame and yes. students' pictures are up there, just like you go to the athletic wall of fame and see students yes. who succeeded on the field, or you see students succeeding in the classroom and their pictures will forever be at Duncanville High School. And these students who made a three- four or five, you know, are being celebrated. So now from 2019 to 2022, we've had our AP program now has over 1,200 students and the numbers will continue to grow because of the way we celebrate. We now have four or five students who are in the race to be considered for the National Merit Scholarship. Now that's what you call academic championship. Absolutely. Also, I want to highlight even our CTE program. My first year there, we had 19 students that got industry-based certifications. Let me say that again. 19 mm -hmm. students who at the time qualified and received an industry-based certification. Sure. Well, you know, those industry-based certifications allows you to go out into the real world. And some of our certifications will allow you to go right in in entry-level positions. Well, this year alone, we've had over 365 students who've already completed 
industry-based certification. Yeah. So that's a major jump. But we celebrate that. Right, we right. highlight that. So those are some of the cool things that we've done uh, to consistently stress academics, but mm -hmm. also show people what it looked like. You can talk about it, but mm -hmm. what does it look like? Yeah. So what is an academic championships? Yeah. Well, academic championships is AP scholars, is CT certifications, you know, dual credit. You know, right. uh, advanced academic degrees. Those are things that will help our students be successful in the real world. Right. And that's what an academic championship looks yeah. like at Duncanville High School. You know, that's that's so powerful, but so subtle because and people will miss that. But that's such a key part, because part of our job, obviously, is to prepare students beyond their K-12 educational experience. And so you have students. We have students that will go the traditional college route. And we have so many programs that they will be able to uh, partake in that will help set them up for success on that route. But then you have students who may not go the traditional route. And so the industry-based certifications and the CTE programs that you touched on, it allows them to have a good start in their life, uh, make a good quality income, and really set them up for success. So I I'm glad you mentioned that. Now... You cannot run Duncanville High School by yourself. It is a large entity. So what things do you do? How are you super intentional about developing other leaders so that they can help you guide that ship? Awesome. You're correct. I cannot leave Duncanville High School alone. I have 18 individuals that I work with that we've been together. The majority of the team has been together for three years now. And uh, I'm going to go back to our playbook. There's a playbook for everything that we do. There's an, there's an uh, instructional playbook that has our instructional framework from our PLC protocols, from our data protocols, from our uh, analysis of student work samples. And then there's our operational playbook uh, that talks about the Administrative Power Zone, the Administrative Power Zone at Duncanville High School consists of three things, right? Administration should be in the classroom, in the hallways, or the cafeteria. That's, the, that's non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. And then we have our culture and climate playbook that we operate from. So for me, being able to build that capacity allows me to monitor that work during our streamline process. I meet with the team every three weeks, and there are some metrics that they're going to present to me, and we go through those metrics. And I spend a lot of time coaching a lot of times supporting because mm -hmm. we have what's called an excellent <clears throat> support model, right? That talks about the framework and then the team work together as teams, right? You got a nine grade team, 10 grade team. So that's teachers working together and learning from each other, but administrators working together and learning from each other. And then tier three of that support system, uh, you know, allows me to get involved to provide that individual support, depending on what it looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, so over the last th two and a half years, I lost four members of my team to promotions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that I probably have about four or five people that are ready to leave some additional mm -hmm. school, just ready to leave in Duncanville. Right, but right. I enjoy spending that time. I enjoy monitoring our systems and processes to watch my team right. grow, but also coaching them on it. Right. They lead a school within a school. So when people say, how do you lead such a large school? Well, my team leads a school within a school. Right. So if you're an assistant principal on the nine grade team, you have two departments that you look and you have an alpha caseload. The expectation is you manage that as if you're the principal. And that's how we lead. And that's how I coach and develop those individuals. Wow, that's a pretty uh, comprehensive system. Balancing uh, delegation because you have to delegate and trust, but also having accountability to ensure the job gets done. That's an ongoing everyday task. So I'm curious as a leader and for those that are aspiring to be in leadership or even already in leadership, uh, having a unique understanding of how to delegate and the balance of delegating and holding people accountable is critical to the results, the end result. So can you touch on how you balance that piece? Definitely, definitely. Once again, you know, in Duncanville, we had a pack. And we talk about professionalism and we talk about accountability. But a lot of times when we talk about accountability, people just automatically assume accountability is a negative word. Accountability is not bad. You know, accountability means that somebody has faith in you. Somebody believes in you. 
So when working with my team, I talk about that from the beginning, from the onset. You asked to be here, right? So our goal is to be the best leader that we can possibly be. And when I'm talking to my team, I don't develop them to be the best AP. I'm developing them for their next job. You're going to be a good AP or a great AP just by a byproduct of what we do. So when we have conversation about are we being successful in the work or are we not being successful in the work, the question always is how can we improve? What are the challenges? And it's great because my team is able to talk through what those challenges are. Our systems are so clear. You know, so if the ball is dropped or if we're struggling in the area, it's evident just by the conversations that we're having. And we're able, I model, right? I don't lead with a S on my mm -hmm. chest. I'm in the work with them. And it's okay for us to fail. It's okay for us to take those bumps and bruises. We're going to take them together. But when you do take a bump and a bruise, I try to lead by extreme ownership. No matter what happens at Duncanville High School, I'm ultimately responsible, and I don't run from that. And I also model that for my team. So if you are leading this school within the school, and for whatever reason we're not successful, man, my team has grown and taken ownership, but also talking about ways that to improve that work. So that's just an example of some of the things that we do. Well, um, it's no uh, accident that uh, you are a successful leader and that you put Duncanville High School in a position to be successful. Sometimes we overlook uh, uh, that success is not an accident. It's, it's intentional and it is on purpose. And you have been intentional and purposeful about really everything that you're doing at Duncanville High School. And, and it's not easy uh, to be engaged in that work each and every day at the level that you are. So I wanna applaud you on your focus and your dedication as a leader. That's what leadership requires. And so, you know, we are now at the finish line. And there's a lot of things uh, that are uh, happening and scheduled the rest of this week as we work our way to May 19th, which is graduation day. I love graduation day. So over the next few weeks, what's happening? What's going on? What's the excitement at uh, Duncanville High School as you work your way to May 19th? Awesome. Well, we're not quite at the finish line. Our saying is we run through the finish line. All right. So I as like we're that. preparing to run through the finish line, as I stated, our name grade students are up first uh, with the uh, EOCs that will start this week with biology, with Algebra 1. And our team is excited. We have some challenges in Algebra 1. So we're looking forward to seeing if all the work we've done over the course of the season will pay off. Uh, we have the next 14 days, we got AP exams. Man, we're looking mm -hmm. forward to adding more students to the AP Wall of Fame. And of course, we got that last stretch run where those seniors are, well, we passed the baton. Here's what we mean when I say pass the baton. Uh, there are times where you're working with seniors and you've done all that you can do, right? Mm -hmm. I'm meeting individuals with senior counselors and we're passing the baton to another teacher or to a parent to help mm -hmm. us ensure that we get 989 students across that finish line. All right. So we're also, so those are some of the cool things that we're doing and we're also finalizing uh, the industry-based certifications. You know, yeah. see, we had a campus goal, right? Our campus goal was for 60% of our students to be CC and MRMET. And the district goal on the strategic plan that we created was by 2024, 80% of our students to be CC and MRMET. Well, Dr. Smith, we got a chance right now to exceed that 2024 goal this, school, awesome. this school year. So those are some of the cool things that are happening that we are running through the finish, finish line to, to complete that DHS this year. So many leadership nuggets that you have shared today. You know, I like the concept where you talked about having a playbook. You know, that's essentially saying you have to have a plan. And then within each plan, you have to be prepared to make adjustments. And then you have to establish the right culture so that there's an emphasis on achievement and production. And you have done all of that. And then the other nugget that I really value uh, about what you shared is people first, process second. So for leaders, people first, process second. It just it just speaks to how valuable it is to honor the work of the people. And that sometimes if you put the processes before the people, then that can really hinder the progress. Because this is a people business and you can't get things without leading others. And you can't be a leader without people following your leadership. So I appreciate you so much. I appreciate your leadership. You've done an outstanding job of leading Duncanville High School. And I know there are many, many more opportunities that you're looking forward to to end this school year. 
uh, go into the summer and then start next school year. And I know with your playbook, whatever challenges come your way, you're going to be prepared to meet and or beat every challenge. This is Mark Smith, and this is my podcast, uh, Super Intentional. You know, I always say that leadership matters. You heard today some awesome leadership nuggets. And so everything rises or falls based on the leader. So as a leader, you have to be super intentional to have any sustained success. And I appreciate you sharing those intentional moments that have led you to sustained success. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Super Intentional with Dr. Mark Smith. Go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're listening on audio platforms, be sure to subscribe and rate the episodes. Follow us on all social media platforms.